Uh, we're here today in Burlington, Ontario, at the site of Thermo Fisher Scientific. Um, Thermo Fisher Scientific is a worldwide leader in serving science. Our mission is to make the world healthier, cleaner, and safer. Um, in Burlington here, it's the automation. We have an automation group, and their specialty is creating robots um, to diagnose if you have COVID or not. So we are the world leader in detecting COVID. Our company <laughs> has sold over 150 million test kits worldwide. So as we work through these challenges, um, I hope you take some of the information today and learn about um, the world around us um, and specifically DNA. We're gonna be doing a DNA extraction. Uh, we're gonna walk you through it and we'll walk you through some of the robotic uh, instruments that we have here around us as well. All right, so we're gonna get started with the presentation and hope you enjoy it. Okay, can you guys see the PowerPoint? Do you want to the presentation now? Oh yeah, we're seeing thumbs up. Thumbs up. Awesome. Okay, All right. Right. Yeah. yeah. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So welcome to some fun with DNA. We'll tell you guys a bit about ourselves. So hi everyone. I'm Atomic Adriana. Uh, my name is Rob the Builder. I'm Vortex Victoria. I'm Molecule Mel. <laughs> And we wanted to tell you guys a little bit about why we got into science. Um, so I got into science because I had a lot of questions about the world around me. Questions like, how do asteroids come down to the earth? Why is the sky blue? Or why do the fall leaves change color when the temperature starts to drop? So through studying science, through watching documentaries, reading books, I've been able to answer a lot of these questions. Hi guys. Uh, so I love science when I was a kid. I love to explore the streams and rivers uh, up at my cottage in Buckhorn, Ontario. Uh, and I spent a lot of time catching frogs, turtles, and snakes. Uh, and when I was younger, I was fascinated by the world around us. And I wanted to learn more about that. So I pursued uh, a degree in biology. And I always wanted to work for a company that's making the world a better place. Uh, and here I am uh, at Thermo Fisher Scientific. Hi, so I wanted to get into science because I wanted to help people. And one day when I was in school, we watched an episode of Bill Nye and he drew a small circle on the screen and he said there's enough room for a million cells to fit in a small circle. I was blown away, I couldn't believe it. So I had to find out for myself. And I got into science because I saw Jurassic Park and I saw that these scientists in a lab made dinosaurs real again uh so i started to try and figure out if i could do that myself didn't quite make it that far but still learned a lot about how cool science can be <laughs> to do things like that perfect okay so today before we get into extracting dna i wanted to talk a little bit about what dna is has anyone heard of dna before if you have you can give a thumbs up if not maybe We'll see a comment. Perfect. I see one thumbs up. I see two thumbs up. Thank you, yeah. So does anyone Three. know what DNA stands for? If you do, write it. It, it stands for a really long word. <laughs> Let's see who can spell or it. Or come off mute and say it if you remember what it is. So it's a tricky one. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's a crazy word, deoxyribonucleic acid. And so this molecule is made up of four different chemicals that repeat in different patterns. And it's pretty incredible that just with these four molecules making DNA, they comprise all the genetic information that gives instructions for cells on what to do and where to go. So your DNA will tell a cell, hey, you're a brain cell, or you're a stomach cell, or you're a cell that resides in the heart. This is called a cardiac cell. And genes are very specific areas of the DNA. 
So a gene, some of our genes say, this is how tall you're gonna be. This is how long your fingers are. Your genes will say what color your hair is. And they'll also, you know, for if you have a dog or a cat, it works the same way. It'll also determine what color their fur is. So we have DNA in all living organisms and genes in all living organisms and all of your genes determine who you are. So we're gonna look on this PowerPoint at genes in different organisms. So we have a bacteria, which we typically think of as germs because some of them make us sick. So they have 4,200 genes. If we go a little bigger at a chicken, it has 17,000 genes. A human has 21,000 genes. And then a water flea, which is really small and microscopic, surprisingly has 31,000 genes. So just because you're a larger organism doesn't mean you have more genes, which is interesting. And if we look at a rice, which I think most of us have seen, it's a small grain that a lot of us eat, there's 30,000 genes. Another interesting thing about DNA, if you remember, we mentioned it's in all living organisms and it's made of four different chemicals. There's a lot of similarity between different organisms. So we're looking at a chimp here and we're gonna compare its DNA to a human's DNA and it's 99.5% similar, which is kind of mind blowing. And if we look at a mouse, it's 88% similar. A chicken is 75% similar. And then a fly is 60% similar, which is kind of mind blowing. So now that we know a little bit about DNA, we're gonna get into extracting it. Today we have strawberries. Um, out of curiosity, are any of you gonna be walking through this experiment with us? If yes, maybe a thumbs up. Do you guys have, okay? Awesome. awesome. Yeah, so let's go through first what you need to get this started. So we've got strawberries. Yeah, and so just, so strawberries, we chose strawberries because they're very squishy and they have lots of DNA. Uh, you can also choose kiwis, bananas, other types of fruits. And uh, strangely enough, strawberries have 800 million, G, uh, 800 million base pairs of DNA. Um, humans have 3 billion, 200 million. A lot of numbers, but <laughs> what's nice about strawberries is that DNA extracts really well. And we have um, some things here to take out the DNA. That's soap. You wanna tell me, uh, Vortex Victoria, what's so good about soap uh, in extracting DNA? Yeah, so soap is both water loving and water hating, and we're gonna use it to break open the cells so we can get everything that is inside a cell, like protein, and right now we're gonna be looking at the DNA. Perfect. So if you have uh, Dove or Dawn, any type of common dish soap will work. Uh, you also should have some alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol works really well. I'm sure a lot of us have this around the house these days. Um, so have some of that ready at the hand. Isopropyl alcohol, once mixed with our solution of DNA, is going to precipitate out the DNA. We're gonna see it as kind of like a fine little, uh, almost like a powder, but it's stringy, okay? The next thing that we need is salt, table salt, okay? Specifically, sodium chloride, or Na plus Cl minus, okay? What's, what's important about salt is that when we mix it with a solution of DNA, uh, the Na plus, atoms are going to bind to the backbone of a DNA molecule. Do you want to show them what a, what a backbone looks like? Yeah. Um, we have, in our robot here, we have this uh, a DNA helix. So a DNA helix looks something like that when you zoom in really close to it in an x-ray crystallography instrument, okay? Now, mm -hmm. the salt is going to bind to the backbone of that DNA, and it's going to stabilize it in solution. Once we add the isopropyl alcohol, it's going to come out of solution. We're going to see it as small little strings of white strands. You also need some H2O. Anybody know what H2O is? Type, type, type it in the chat if you know H2O. I see a thumbs up. Can you type it? What is it? Okay, water, water. perfect, water. Eric, love it, <laughs> love it, great answer. That is correct. Um, we also are gonna be having some other tools here. We need a coffee filter, um, just a standard coffee filter will work. Um, some toothpicks or popsicle sticks to basically spool the DNA once we precipitate it. Stir it around. 
stir it around, and um, a pipette. Now, if you don't have any of these ingredients, you can always make it work. It doesn't have to be exact. The volumes can be um, manipulated, approximate. So just do your best to follow along. We're gonna go as slow as we can and uh, we'll see if we can make it work. So should we get should yeah, we started? Yeah, let's get started. Okay. All right, so did you wanna start with the strawberries? Gonna yeah. quarter it? Okay. So the first thing that we need is to get your strawberry. If you don't have strawberries, you could try banana, something else in the house. Use your scissors. This is the fun part. We're gonna slice up our strawberry. So I'm gonna put a quarter. So yeah, Ziploc bag, make sure you have your Ziploc bag and put a quarter of a strawberry in the Ziploc bag. Don't need yeah. a lot. Okay, so once that's there, you can just leave it there for now because the next step, we're gonna make a lysis solution. And that's, we talked about that, soap and salt and water, okay? So what does lysis mean? I think this is a new vocab word. Did you wanna go ahead and describe it? Sure. Atomic Adriana? <laughs> Sure thing. So when Rob says lysis, this is basically a word that is describing we're going to break the cell membrane. So our strawberries are made up of lots of little cells. We need to break the membrane because the DNA is inside of the cell membrane, inside the cells. Okay. So first things first is we need 10 mils of water approximately. Um, take your water, pour it into uh, a falcon tube or measuring a, cup. a measuring cup that you have. Perfect. Thank you, Vortex. <laughs> <laughs> uh, molecule. Okay. Yeah, Molecule Mel. Got, got the name wrong there. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add 10 drops of soap. Okay, so we can just take our Dawn uh, or we can take, uh, if you have a pipetter, use a pipetter. We're going to do 10 drops of soap. It's a little thing to pick it up, suck it up. That's you what suck it up with yeah. a pipetter. But you, you don't need the pipette. You can just put drops into your water. One, two, three, four. Who wants to count? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Okay, let's let's just take a break here. Is everybody doing okay? Is everybody following this so far? Perfect. Yeah, yeah okay. great. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we're going to add the salt, all right? So we add a little bit of salt, like salt bay, right? <laughs> they know what salt bay is. Oh, yeah. Just all right, so just a little bit of salt and soap. And now we're just going to mix that nicely. It's called inversion. We're going to invert the tube about 10 times. So let's count. I'm One. at four, five, six, seven, eight nine, 10. Okay. Salt doesn't look dissolved yet. You can give it a little flick. Yeah. Maybe. If you're just using a cup, just stir around the cup. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to give this over to Atomic Adriana and Vortex Victoria, and they are going to add it to the strawberry. Okay. Well, right before we add it, guys, and this is kind of a fun part, let's mash the strawberry. Mash it good. Mash it Squish real it. good. Stomp on it. <laughs> make sure it's in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make a mess of the kitchen. Yes, yeah, so I'm gonna put this on the table just so I can smash it a little more. Um, so one of the things of strawberries, inside strawberries, there are enzymes, cellulases and pectinases. These are enzymes that degrade sugars. So uh, what's neat about strawberries is as we start to do this and break apart, a lot of those, um, enzymes are going to be released and start to break it down naturally. Okay, so now we're going to put in our lysis buffer, which we said was basically it's a solution that's going to help break the cell membrane and release the DNA that we're trying to isolate. Okay. So we should be at this stage now. Let's give a break and just make sure everyone Yeah, how's everybody has doing? added their... Any questions or anything? solution to give, their strawberry. Perfect, Jeff. Give, give us a thumbs up if uh, you're at least following along or maybe type something in the chat if you have any questions. All you right. Jeff in perfect. a cash. Perfect. Ryan, thumbs Eric, up. nice. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to filter out a lot of the cellular debris. Okay. There's a lot of things in there that we don't want. 
um, it's going to give us basically a solution that has the DNA in it, as well as some protein and some other material. Okay, so so if you have a coffee filter and a cup, put it together like Rob, Rob the Builder just did. Yeah. <laughs> Rob the Builder just built. So yeah, <laughs> built the yeah Rob the Builder. Um, <laughs> okay, so we're going to add it to the coffee filter, and we're going to let it percolate just as we would kind of coffee. We're going to let it sit through the filter. Um, and it may take some time. So once you add it to the filter, it's not all gonna, it's gonna start to trickle through drop by drop. Um, yeah. Let's give it a couple minutes. Once you guys get that done. Yeah, so we don't, once we have um, our strawberry solution in here, we don't wanna squeeze the filter. We're just gonna let it sit and slowly yes. trickle through. If we squeeze the filter, because um, this coffee filter is pretty delicate, we can get all the other chunks Kind of coming through and we want to mitigate that we don't want that to happen so let's just, just have second. this sit for now is everyone okay with their coffee filters and their strawberries thumbs up in there okay. Yay! Nice. <laughs> okay cool okay. guys by the way i love seeing the thumbs up because this is what we see <laughs> behind the scenes look all right yeah. so all right so let's move on to the next thing while we're waiting for that we're going to show you uh, some of the robotics here around the room um so Molecule Mel is going to walk us through uh, a robotic arm called our orbiter. A spinnaker. A spinnaker, sorry. <laughs> this is our spinnaker, guys. This is a robot. Basically, what you guys have all been doing manually, uh, putting together the soap and putting together the water and mashing up the strawberry, robots can do all of that for us now. And we have instruments to do so many different things in science. So right here we have a robot. And this robot helps because he picks up these plates. And these plates are usually filled with um, samples. So they're filled with either cells or, or pieces of strawberry that you want to dig in and you want to pull DNA out of. So they all sit in here and this robot will pick up the plate and it'll move it to instruments that can help do work. So this instrument here would actually drop in that water and salt uh, to help bring out the DNA from strawberries. I'm going to show you guys how in the lab, we would we would use a robot and how we would teach a robot and, and how easy it is to work with a robot. So if I wanted to teach this robot, I just have to come to the screen here, give them a good shot. I have to get it going. So I have to I have to get it started. I have to hit run. Whoop, the robot made a noise. It's moving. I didn't turn the robot on. <laughs> It's really easy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> We're just turning on our robot. <laughs> the robot doesn't understand English, so we have to turn it on. He only understands numbers. Uh, she... Molecule Mel should have checked to make sure the green light was on before she started trying to run the robot. <laughs> All right, so it's on now, and the robot's doing a little bit of a, a move right now. So, so the robot's trying to figure out where am I? What's going on? Where am I in space? So it's going to move up and down uh, fairly slowly, figure out where it is. <laughs> so he's doing his little dance. He's looking around. He's seeing what instruments are around, what plates are around. For all the parents out there, how much does this cost now? <laughs> um, it's quite a bit of money. No, <laughs> it's is definitely. Is it the cost of a car? Um, no, no, no. Well, no, actually, probably around the cost of a car, That's a cool. nice car. Okay. Okay. So if I wanted to, I have lots of robots here, guys. I can move the, them around, I can work with them, I can take them from place to place to teach them where to go. And then I also have bigger versions of these robots. So we have robots over here. Super big version of this robot, super tall version of this robot. And this robot can go from different shelves and all these shelves can have instruments on them. And you can actually work with these shelves and you can you can swing them out. 
if there wasn't another robot behind it. <laughs> <laughs> and you can play with the handles and you can do pretty cool stuff. Like these systems can get super, super big. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Molecule Mel. Okay. Very cool okay. stuff. So at this point, um, most of our liquid has filtered through our coffee filter. So now we're ready to start working with what we would call purified, which means we've removed a lot of the junk that we don't want. So at this point, we should have DNA in our cup. All right, so we're going to take uh, another cup or a tube, whatever you have, and we're going to transfer equal volumes, okay, of the lysis solution that we've just purified through the filter and an equal volume of the alcohol, okay? so. In this case, I'm going to do five mils and five mils. Whatever you can do, just eyeball it, um, figure out what's best. Yeah, so you don't want what's inside the coffee filter. We're throwing it out. Yeah. We don't want that. We only want the liquid that flowed through the coffee filter because that contains DNA. And so we're going to pour it in. Okay, just do it by, by eye. I'm going to just pour in. Luckily for these tubes that I have, they're very neat. They also have... Um, they have numbers on the side, which tell me how much is there. And that number there is five mils. So uh, we're getting with five mils of lysis solution containing our DNA, and we're going to add the alcohol. Don't, uh, don't stir this once you add it, just add it directly to the top. And the DNA should precipitate out of solution at the junction between the two solutions. Okay, so we can maybe zoom into this and we'll pour this in very gently. Remember equal volumes, in this case, I've measured it's five mils. So just let it sit. We're going to let it sit. Maybe you can zoom in a bit. Um, you can see a lot of the solution has turned white. Um, that's going to be some protein and some DNA. Okay, so we're just going to let that sit for a second. The DNA is starting to come out of solution. How's everyone doing? Does it look like this? All right. All right, so looking at it, it doesn't look like much, but this is the 800 million base pairs uh, in the strawberry. We can take a stick or a popsicle stick or a toothpick, whatever you have, and you can spool it, all right? So you can move it in, move it around. And as I pull out, actually there's a string there, you'll see, I don't know if it's hard to see by camera, very small amount at the end of that tip is uh, spools of DNA. Um, if you were to see that in a microscope, you would be pleasantly surprised. But it with this, like what's in the handle. yeah, it will look like what's in the handle. It just looks like it's kind of goopy and stringy, but in there is the code of life, which is deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay. So today, if you've followed along, you've isolated strawberry DNA, congratulations. Um, is there anything else we need to cover? I think. That was Let's it. see, how is everyone doing? Have yeah. you guys got to this point? Do you want us to go back and over anything? Jeff, you've got it. Any questions about what we do, about DNA? Do you guys have fun? Got it? Did you guys manage to, uh, get to this point, pretty cool stuff, right? Remember, it's a molecule, so we don't get to see it unless we look at it really close with an instrument. So by eye, it's not really, it's not really, it's, I don't know, kind of weird, right? But trust us when we say that in there is, is DNA. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. May Rose, yeah, I think so we've what would be, Eric is asking what would be done next? Tell us more. So what you can do is you can extract this uh, liquid that contains the DNA and you can evaporate all of the alcohol that's there. You'll be left with a fine powder. The powder is actually DNA or a pellet. We call it a pellet when in molecular biology. Uh, that can be used, for example, for if you want to sequence the genome, right? You could run it through an instrument similar to maybe point to this instrument over here. This is called a uh, qPCR instrument. And this can be used to figure out um, what genes are present in the strawberry DNA. 
so I'm this so once you find out genes that are in your strawberry or whatever sample you take you can find out more information about what proteins you're looking at and maybe even find out if they're sick or um, if there's anything that we can do to help them. Perfect. Yeah. Because yeah. we were talking a little bit about how your DNA is what makes you you. So if we use instruments to look at, you know, specifically what your DNA is, you could say, see who you're related to. You could be able to tell what color your hair is, although most of us know by looking in the mirror. Um, but there's a lot of information you can what get. What food you like? Yeah. Or what food you might be intolerant to? You yes. can tell that from your DNA. We our experiment didn't work. We accidentally poured too much alcohol. You put what in? Too much alcohol. Rita? Too much alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> that's too bad you can try it again that all, that happens all the time in science let me tell you the amount of times i failed at doing experiments is is wild even <laughs> just now when i was trying to show you guys the robots i forgot to turn the robot on so <laughs> but that's happens. what makes science fun you yeah. keep trying try again <laughs> <laughs> maybe you'll see it if you try again okay okay perfect thanks for participating I hope you guys had fun. You can show your 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 mom and dad, your brothers and sisters, your friends uh, what you know how to do. Try again. <laughs> it's okay. I think we're good. Any other questions? Great job, guys. Can the solution be put down the sink? Yes, it can, Akash. Trigger desired for a remote microscope? Yes. <laughs> I have one at my house. Yeah, a little one. They want microscopes? Yeah. If you guys are interested in more science experiments or more things that can be done fun with science, I'm sure you could definitely reach out to Dave Rose and she could provide some resources. Um, and help connect you guys with us because we have a lot of activities and a lot of fun things that we can do outside of just extracting DNA. Okay. Thank you, Melanie. Um, so just to remind everyone, we will be switching um, you to the next activity in the next one minute. So we're just waiting for, for the other room to, to finish. So you, in the meantime, you can ask more questions to uh, Melanie, um, Robert, and, and uh, Victoria. <laughs> do you guys want to know about any other things in science? What are you guys learning about in school right now? We don't need this part. <laughs> Hello. Hi. 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 Hi, guys. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here. here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Come on, camera, if you guys want to feel comfortable. Show us what you guys did. Wow. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. Really well done. Ah, that's a good question, Antoine. What is the DNA? How long is DNA? What color is it? Times because we can't see DNA with the naked eye, we actually use dyes. Mm. So a lot of times we use a dye that's blue, and then we're gonna put it under a microscope to see it. But usually because it's so small, we actually with the naked eye we, we can't see 
the structure or the color but we use instruments like microscopes to be able to visualize and see them. That was a really, really good question. <laughs> you guys know that we could, uh, we can make DNA glow in the dark and shine bright colors. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Using dyes from jellyfish and algae that actually glow in the dark when they're in the ocean. We can use this to make our DNA in our samples glow in the dark. So then we can go under a microscope and look at the DNA. Mm -hmm. You know what also is extra cool is we can we can change DNA in the lab. So we can we can make animals look different and we can make uh, better products, we can make better crops. I used to work in a, in the lab and I used to work with, with corn and we used to grow a lot of, a lot of corn and we used to look for DNA that could help us, traits in DNA that could help us make really, really good corn. <laughs> and corn yeah. <laughs> Pineapple can strap. Make, can you make co colorful corn? You can make colorful corn. I love corn. that. That's such a great answer. That's awesome. Yeah. Colorful corn is because of your DNA. And the sequence of each kernel is just a little bit different. Yeah. It's because the genes jump from one spot to another. <laughs> They're jumping genes. Hi. Hi.